Hello everyone, uh, today is the 10th of April 2018, today I want to be talking, if I can get this camera set up, alright, oh come on, <laughs> alright, alright, I want to be talking to you about the, uh, the channel awesome scandal and if you don't know what i'm talking about and you're just if you're familiar with my channel or if you don't know what i'm talking about channel awesome uh what is a video platform system basically it basically what it was beforehand was a website called back out glasses.com and then grew into channel awesome which had many many contributors on the site basically you had people who were doing video game reviews, movie reviews, and, and very weird niche reviews in between. You have people doing uh, reviews of video games, obscure movies, and television shows. Uh, but one of the famous faces on there was Doug Walker, a.k.a. the Nostalgia Critic. And he started this business by himself. Like He started with him, with his brother, Mike Mashad, Mike Ellis. They started this thing called, the, you know, this thing, and... Basically, you know, Doug, you know, took this, you know, this character, this idea, this hobby, and made it into a functional career. And it's really, it's a, it's a really great story because, like, he quits his job in the most like punk rock way. He comes to, into work one day with a stereo. Blares that tooth that, that, da, na, 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 that song, and he, he you know he jumps up on a chair and removes his shirt and it says, "I quit on it." Like that 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 to me is very punk rock. And then he's blaring uh, Queen's uh, Bohem Rhapsody. I, it was just just something about that that made me like like this guy. And plus, like his reviews, like I know many out there. Are uh, gonna be like, I don't know. There are many, there's many, there's gonna be many people out there gonna be like, I didn't like the nostalgia. I don't think he's funny. He sucks. And you know, it, in the beginning, he was funny, and I really think that because like he was trying his best to be funny and try to see if he still was funny, and throwing whatever worked against the throwing whatever, whatever at the wall and seeing if it will work. And, you know, there's been a lot of ones that have just been hit and misses. His uh, Let's Play of uh, Bart's Nightmare, Melvin, Melvin, Brother of the Joker. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, this is... Emo Jones, I think. Emo Jones could have had could have been potential, but failed miserably. Hold on. Yeah, but some of them are not... Super bad, but not, some of them were not super great either. Oh, hello. Sorry, talking in a truck, find a nice little secluded area. But I, I'm just so annoyed with it. I'm just, you know, when I was a kid, like, you know, I used to, I'm gonna, excuse me, when I was a kid, when, back in 08, I used to watch The Nostalgia Critic because, like, to me, this was a guy who was going to make some changes in the internet world. And he did. He did. He took those, you know, individuals that came onto the site later. Scarab Salupa, which will be mentioned later. Uh, Brad Jones, Linkara. These different names and attitudes. And hell, the Brawl movie, like the first Brawl movie, introduced me to a lot of individuals. That I didn't care for, but then watching them, I'm like, oh, why didn't I watch these before? You know, Angry Joe was one of them. I still watch Angry Joe's reviews. Um, you know, I still watch some of most of these people today. Sometime in like, you know, oh, but anyhow, but this is not only did, uh, you know, I like the watching the nostalgia critic. It also, you know, I made friends with a nostalgia critic. People who I found who also liked the nostalgia critic, who also liked the same things I did. When I was in college and watching the nostalgia critic, you know, I, you know, I met people who had the same common interests as I did with the nostalgia critic. We had like a bond over this, but I, 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 
as I say this, I'm heartbroken to find out, like, what's been really going on behind the scenes. And, like, granted, I always imagined, like, it wasn't pitch perfect and, you know, all sunshine, sunshines and rainbows. And it, it, this comes in that Google, th- there's a Google document coming out that it's t- entitled Not So Awesome, talking about the shitty business practices of the of uh, Channel Awesome and the nostalgia critics' uh, inept ability to do reviews. and Like, it is inept ability of directing, writing, and, like, any technical stuff. Which, I'll start with the technical aspect of it. Some of that is very petty, but borders on petty, like him not knowing how to use Skype for recordings, which, okay, that's kind of dumb, or knowing how to do this or that, directing, juxtaposition, the simple things. And also, the fact that you should feed your crew is an important one. Like, this is a minor gripe of mine. Like, if you're going to, even when I was doing my filming and stuff, I brought water and shit like that. You know, I fed my crew. I I fed my team. It's a team. It's a team-based thing. You can't just, like, expect everybody to bring their own food. No, you got to feed your team. It's like like any sporting event. you got to feed your team. Mm. God, it looks so hideous when I'm eating. I'm like... (laughs) Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, like there's some minor cripes about it and like his writing here and there, but I'm not here to talk about that because that's just minor. It's his attitude towards things and especially Doug Walker and Rob Walker. Because when I heard, heard about this, like about his like shitty filmmaker, like his like poor management of filmmaking, he apparently... Apparently, when one of the cast members, uh, 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 Lindsay Ellis, who was the nostalgia chick at the time, um, asked uh, Doug if there would be any like craft services or anything like that, he, he laughed at her, like jokingly, like "Oh, you princess!" Like, but this is a big thing, like you know, and, and also like you know, it's a big thing. You know, you have to feed your crew and water them, and otherwise they're gonna pass out. And they're gonna not. They're gonna be fatigued, and you're filming for eighteen hours straight. Feed your fucking crew. But then there's also him doing weird shit, not getting permits, directing people who are pedestrians. Like during the Suburban Nights, and they were direct. He, Doug was trying to, you know, direct pedestrians like they were part of the film. Um, just all that kind of weird shit. And then, like, neglecting, you know, people's help and you know, speaking behind them and shit like that, that, it just was just rotten. Like, and and just the fact that the way this sounds, it sounds like the Walker brothers have became, like, arrogant. Like, not cocky. Like, there's a moment when you become cocky, when you know what you're doing, opposed to, like, there's two different types of cocky. Cocky is like, I know what I'm doing. This is nothing. Piece of cake. Other cocky is arrogant cocky. You think you know what you're doing. Versus what you know, what you know, know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I, I, just like his arrogant attitude, and also the business practice. Apparently, they had an administrator named Holly, who did all their liaison, a did their booking and stuff like that, getting in contact with the producers and stuff like that. And she got fired because of surgery. She, she had to get an emergency surgery. And she got fired. And this woman was working constantly. I mean constantly. Holidays, weekends, whatever. And they and they basically told her to fuck off. Like, that was some shitty business practice. And Doug Walker was involved with that. He was involved. He was the deciding vote. You know, and then, like, there's moments of, like, Mike Ellis fucking sexually harassing one of the male. One of the male... Uh, contributors, a, a, I think the epic fail guy, but it, it was just run to the core, not like that to me, it was like not good. And especially other sexual misconduct from Mike, 
Michael McCod, McShod, because like it, it, to me it was like that to me is just like rotten. That some of the shit he he's done is rotten, but also Doug and the whole like the way they treated people and shit like that, and the way like it just breaks my fucking heart because I have I made friends. That I made friends through that, like, that guy with the glass. Not through the website. I mean, like, through that love of the Nostalgia Critic and the team of Channel Awesome. Because you thought there was, like, a camaraderie. And it turns out it was just Doug Walker being, you know, an asshole. And an, an arrogant asshole. Like, you know, it's okay to not know what the fuck you're doing. You've got to ask people for help. It's gonna go in there. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have no time to edit and make fucking videos anymore. I'm trying my best. But goddamn, I mean, I, granted, there's people out there who are on the uh, cynical side who just like want to make like jokes and shit like that, and you know, and just say, "Well, it kind of sucks." And it's like, and then there's people who are like generally upset about this. Like, Grant, I was watching Escura Sloopa talking about this, and she was affected, too. And I think she was mostly affected by this, too, because of, like, the way she was mistreated, too, and the way, you know, how she got fired. Because she was putting a, I don't know, she was doing something with Patreon, and they didn't like it, and they made the decision to fire her. And I think Doug was involved with that, too. Like, there was a lot of, like, shitty things that were going on between tra Channel Awesome. I mean, which, which fucking irritates me. And I don't want to defend... I, I'm, I'm disappointed in Doug and Rob. Mike Machado is a piece of shit. And, like, I feel bad for... I, well, I don't feel bad for Doug anymore because he sold his rights away to the nostalgia critic, to that asshole. And, like... They're kind of hypocrites because it's like the shit they talked about, like people selling out and blah, blah, blah. You know, all the joke reviews, the chart guys, the lore, like all the certain things they done themselves. I mean, that shitty game show they did that, um, you know, selling out their character. And it's like, you know, I used to defend Doug Walker. He talked about where's the free speech and like, yet yeah, you're shitting on people. And manipulated them for your fucking benefit, for your cash. And by the way, pay your fucking employees. I mean, for the video things, the, the, those the movies, those crossover movies, you didn't pay anybody. What the fuck's the matter with you? You know, but I, I'm just disappointed. I'm super fucking disappointed in the Nostalgia Critic. In, you know, Doug Walker. I'm just disappointed. You guys fucking suck. I'm no longer support. I, I actually had unsub from Channel Awesome. I haven't watched a review in a while because, again, his quality has gone fucking downhill. I don't know. That's just me. I'm gonna make this a short video, but I, I say support your support the channel you like. Like support support those other guys. Like don't support you know Doug. Rob or Mike Mashad, Mike Ellis, don't don't support those cocksuckers. I suggest you support, you know, Excurus Lupa, Phalus, Brad Jones. Support like the, the the hardcore, like support those guys. You know, Angry Joe, Linkara, Mars Girl, um, those individuals. So I'm gonna end the video right here, and this is this kid saying. Listen, if you're going to do any kind of business, any kind of filmmaking, or anything like that, just remember just to treat people with respect and dignity. Don't, like, treat them like crap. Alright? Alright, take care, love you, and bye-bye.